give you honor, we give you adoration for being such a wonderful God, for being our mighty Jehovah, our deliverer, our redeemer. We appreciate you that since the beginning of this year, Father, you have been with us like a mighty warrior. We thank you for making us to see the light of this day. We lay down last night, we slept, we awoke this morning because you, Lord God, sustained us. Thank you for your sustenance, your maintenance, your protection, your preservation, your provision in our life. We give you glory. I accept our thanks to Lord in Jesus' name. Yes. Father, we thank you for your word that is forever set within heaven. We thank you for your word that you have magnified above your name. Father, we want to go into your word. The Bible says the entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. Father, illuminate the eyes of our heart with the word this day in Jesus' name. Sanctify us, O Lord, with your truth. Your word is the truth, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, reform and transform our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Give us a hearing here. Let your word be appreciated as, as the word of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good all the time. I want to say cavalry greetings and cavalry gre uh, victories to you all. In the precious and mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want to welcome each and every one of us to this Holy Communion and uh, Thanksgiving service. Because it is our norm in this church to dedicate the very first Sunday of the month as a Sunday for Thanksgiving. To just give God thanks for what God has been doing in our life in our lives individually and in our lives corporately as a church since the beginning of the year. We are here to just give credence to the word of God in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 12 that says Ebenezer thus far the Lord has helped us. Thus far the Lord has helped us. I want us to understand that it has been you know the divine help that we have been receiving that has kept us this far. I want to just give God the glory in Jesus' name. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10, it said, Honor the Lord with your possessions. Honor the Lord with your possessions and the first fruit of your increase. And there is a reason for that. It says so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. That is why God said we should honor him with our possession and the first fruit of our increase. None of us has seen this day before. None of us has been to, you know, October 5, 2014 before. So it's an increase for you and I. That is why it is paramount and it's relevant for us, you know, to show our appreciation to God by coming to just honor him with the increase that God has given us. You know, the, 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 the word first fruit signifies that term. Um, or implies that the other fruits are on their way. That is why I know you are going to see more of this day in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, you, you're going to see many more, you know, many more, many more months in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I told you every month, as you know, Revelation chapter 22, verse 2, every month has a fruit. Every individual month, you see, January has its own fruit, February has its own fruit. October that we are in, too, has its own fruit. Bible says each tree you is fruit every month. I pray that the fruit of blessing that God has a, you know, earmarked for you for this month, you will garner them in Jesus' name. You won't miss out of them in Jesus' name. I am talking of fruit of breakthrough, fruit of victories, of a prosperity. They shall be ours this month in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. I don't want us to take the benefit of God in our life for granted, people of God. Because God has been, you know, blessing us, providing for us since the beginning of the year. The psalmist says in Psalm 68, verse 19, he said, Blessed be the Lord God of our salvation. Psalm 68, verse 19, the Lord God of our salvation, who daily loads us with benefits. On daily basis, on continual basis, God loads us with benefits. Benefit of good health, Food on the table, roof over our heads, the job we keep, the possessions that we have. People of God, we should not assume or presume that they are our divine rights 
or because or we are hardworking or this or that. Or, no, no, no. The Bible says, what do you have that you have not received? Again, God said, where is the boast in there? What do we have that we have not received from God? The Bible tells us that every good gift and every perfect gift, they are from above, from the Father of all lies. James 1, 17. In whom there is no variation nor any shadow of turning. Everything that you and I have, they are from God. And I want you to know one thing. I, I've said it so many times in this church and I'm going to keep on repeating it. If God didn't want us to have it, we would never have had them. Because John the Baptist said in John 3, 27, he said, a man can only receive that which he has been given from heaven. If God didn't want you to have whatever you have, your children, your houses, your cars, you would never have been able to have them. It does not matter how hardworking you are. It does not matter how connected you are. I have actually told you last week that connection is immaterial when it comes to God's blessing. It is the blessing of God that makes one to become rich. The Bible says he had no sorrow. Praise the Lord. So that's why we are here and we are, you know, you know, you know just agreeing with the psalmist who said in Psalm 103, he said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. In other words, don't forget. In other words, you should remember the benefits of God in your life. Hallelujah. We give God the glory. How many of people know that, you know, if not for God, <laughs> did you know the fresh air we breathe? I told you at some point in China, they were bottling, they were, you know, putting cans, fresh air. They were selling fresh air in, in China because the air in China was so polluted, you know. But here we are. We breathe in and out fresh air. Hallelujah. From God Almighty. The Bible says in Job 33, I believe verse 4. Amen. The Bible says there, it says, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. The breath of the Almighty. The breath of the Almighty has given him life. The Bible says in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Hallelujah. God has been so good to us. He did not only give us this, you know, fresh oxygen, he gave us of his spirit. The Bible says in that same Job 12 verse 10, it said, in the hand of God is the life of every living thing. In the hand of God. Our life is in his hand. Our times are in his hand. And God has been blessing us, keeping us, preserving us. He has not allowed the enemy to, 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 to have his way concerning our lives. God has been frustrating the tokens of the liars. God has been driving the vanish mad on our accounts. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it for our good. The, 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 the Balaam of this world that were hired by the Balak of this world, ah, they couldn't cost us because a cost without a cost shall not alight. Whatever caused the plan for us, God has turned them to our blessing. I want you to begin to see what God has been doing in your life. When the enemy thought you cannot make it, where the enemy thought you will not reach, those places, those stormy blood that the enemy has put in your path have become the stepping stone to your breakthrough. God has been good to us, people of God. People of God, I want us to appreciate God that he has kept our souls among the living. I've told you the dead do not praise God. I don't care how anointed, how rich somebody is, when that person is dead, is dead. They don't preach, preach, I mean, praise God in Sheol. Hallelujah. Psalm 6 verse 5 says, In death there is no remembrance of you. In death there is no remembrance of God. He said, In the grave, who will give you thanks? You don't give God thanks when you are already dead. That is why Psalm 150 says, Let every in the house bread praise the Lord. Once you have the breath, it doesn't matter what you are going to people of God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter. Give God thanks once you have the breath of life. Give God thanks. Did you know Jonah was going through a lot? <laughs> he was in the belly of the, of the whale. He said in Jonah 2 verse 9, he said he will offer God sacrifice of thanksgiving. This was somebody who was shipwrecked, who was caught up in a, in a storm. We know it was because of his disobedience. Amen. But he could, he, he, could, he, could, he could still think when he saw the deliverance, what God was about to do, the deliverance of God. 
He said, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. It doesn't matter what you are going to people of God because I want you to understand that uh, that situation you are going through that is trying to steal your joy, God can turn it around. Because the Bible says God changes time and season. God can change that situation around. Because the Bible says all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. If God has called you and you love the Lord, guess what? That situation, God can turn it around for your good. Joseph's situation was a typical example. We saw what happened in his life. We saw what happened in the life of Mordecai. How God ultimately glorified himself in, the, in, in, the, in their lives. So people of God, don't let the devil steal your joy. In everything, give, keep on giving thanks. In everything, in them, whatever situation you are, if you are in the belly of will, give thanks. If you are going through the fire, go give thanks. Because God has promised you in the book of Isaiah 43, he said when you go through the fire, he will be with you. He said when you go through the storm, he said he will not allow the storm to overwhelm you. Give thanks. You see, some people say, oh, you can't give thanks for, you know, to God for everything. Yes, that's what the Bible commanded us to do. For everything. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20. He said, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. For everything. It doesn't matter what that situation shall be. I've told you, when you give thanks, when situations are not conducive, it means you are exercising an incredible faith. And what moves God is faith. The substance of things hoped for. Because when you are giving thanks in that situation, you are trusting God to turn that situation around. And guess what God is going to do? It will surely. Because the Bible says it's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The Bible says without faith in which it is impossible to please him. Once you exercise faith in the, in the Lord, God will turn that situation around for your good. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. God is good. We want to thank God. Because through his mercy, we have not been consumed. You know, some people, you see, America is now shaking all over the place because of Ebola virus. Listen, they are not paying attention to things that enter virus. The people that, the students, the kids that have been killed, you know, through enterovirus, is even much more than those ones that have been dealt with by Ebola virus. I want you to know, all of us, we have children in schools, but you have not had an emergency. God has not allowed the enterovirus to enter into their system. Hallelujah. Lamentation chapter 3, 22 says, To the Lord's mercy we have not been consumed, for his compassion fails not. They are new every morning, every morning, every morning. Great is his faithfulness. God has been faithful to us, people of God. In spite of all the odds, in spite of all the challenges of life, in spite of all the vicissitudes of life, in spite of all the, you know, the, the disappointments we, 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 we have sometimes, in spite of the, all the up and down of life, God remains God in our lives. Hallelujah. How many times has God, you know, has he, you know, checkmated the devil, telling the devil, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. If not for God, people of God, if not for God, remember one day when you were driving and it was as if your car was going to fail, the brake was going to fail. And you said, Jesus. And that car just stopped. How did it? How did, that, how did the car stop? When, when, when people didn't like you because of your skin color, they gang up against you on the, in your places of work. They, 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 they made up some stories against you. They wanted to get you into trouble. Remember, a man did it against the Jews. He did it against Mordecai. But the gallo, the gallo that a man, you know, erected was that same gallo that, you know, he wanted to use that gallo for Mode, against Mordecai. Uh -huh. You dig a pit, the Bible says we we'll fall into it. All those conspirators, all those, you know, you know, you know gang up against you. The Bible says, you know, if they gang up against you, it's, like, it's not for my sake. It says, whoever gangs up against you will fall for your sake. God disgrace your enemy. Hallelujah. When they told you, oh, there's no money in, the, in your back account, they will go to the poss you possess your car. And God said, which car? Not my daughter's car. Not my son's car. 
when they were repossessing houses, like you know, left and right, left and right, God said, no. Not my, my children's car. Not my children's houses. And God kept you. He stood there for you. He vouchers for you. Hallelujah. Give God glory. Hallelujah. God is good. You see, the psalmist says in Psalm 77 verse 11, Psalm 77 verse 11 says, I will remember the work of the Lord. Part of the trouble we have as Christians is that we don't remember the work of the Lord. He said, surely I will remember your wonders of old. I'm trying to let you see why you should thank God. You know, don't focus on the negativities going on around you. You know, that song writer didn't say count your trouble. He said count your blessings and name them one by one. By the time you begin to enumerate your blessings, you'll be surprised how much God has done in your life, in your family. But many of us, when you say, what are your blessings? I told you, say one, two, three, we are done. But when you say, well, you know, kind of, how about the trouble or the challenges? Oh my God, I will need a calculator. I will need an adding machine. The Bible says, if I were to be enumerating what God has done for me, that's Psalm 139. He said they are more than the ears of my head. Hallelujah. So instead of us to be focusing on the trouble that, and the challenges we have in life, we should keep on remembering the works of the Lord. In Psalm 7 verse 11 and to 12, it said, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on your work and talk of your deeds. Instead of us to be talking of the trouble, why don't we begin to talk about the deeds of God in our lives? What God has done in our lives. I will talk of your deeds, what God has done, what God has performed. When you pray, and God answer your prayer. Hallelujah. When you apply for that job, and God, God, God gave you that job, even though there were some people better than you, but God gave the job. When you traveled, and God allowed your plane to land safely, a plane was missing maybe about nine months ago. They've not found that plane up to today. Hallelujah. I want us to begin to see what God is doing in our life. Amen? In other words, keep on counting your blessing and, and stop adding your trouble. And that's why we put in our nugget today, we said disregard your complaints. Disregard your complaints and discover your gratitude. We say release your trouble and restate your blessings. Troubles are universal. People go to trouble. That you are, if I promise you I'm not going to go to trouble, you know, I will be going against the word of the Lord. Jesus Christ said himself in John 16, 33, he said, in this world, you face tribulations. You face challenges. He said, but be of good share, for I have overcome the world. He overcame the world on our behalf. So in other words, those, the, 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 the potency of those tribulations and challenges have been deflated. You can go through those challenges, sharing yourself up and saying, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And you go through the storm. Hallelujah. Don't throw a pity party. When you throw a pity party, thinking that, oh, it's me. <laughs> they will come, the people, you know, mystery lost company. But share up. Exercise faith. Know fully well that God has got your back. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we are here this morning to just come and praise God. To Lord God. To applaud God. To glorify Him. To magnify Him. For all what He has been doing in our life. For his goodness and his wonderful works. Even if the Bible didn't tell us to, 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 to give thanks, common courtesy demands that we should give thanks. One of my commonest definitions of gratitude is that you know it's appreciation. I said it's, it's appreciation is a, it's a fundament, fundamental, you know. It's so fundamental in, in human relationship, and it is no less important in our relation with our God. You know, ingratitude is like, you know, or an ungrateful, ungrateful person. It's like a pig, you know, under the, the, the acorn, eating, eating the acorn, or, or, or under the oak tree, eating the acorn, without looking up where it's coming from. That's an ingrate, ungrateful person. You know, there was um, this story, I, I don't know if I've told you before, 
there was a farmer who had an ungodly, ungodly uh, 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 relative. This relative of you say, no, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. So one time, the ungodly relative came to visit the farmer. And so the farmer prepared a very sumptuous meal. And when the meal was ready to be eaten, the farmer bowed down his head and began to say the grace. And uh, the ungodly friend was so upset. He said, that is so yesterday. That is so old school. That is out fashioned. There is no God. He said, why, why, why do you do that for anyway? So anyway, the old farmer smiled and said to the ungodly uh, relative, there is one on my farm who doesn't thank God before he eats. So the relative, the ungodly relative was excited when he said to him, there is somebody on my farm who doesn't give thanks before he eats his food, just like you. Then the man said, who is that person? To which the farmer replied, my pig. Praise the Lord. Because in everything, give thanks. Hallelujah. Whoever forgets the language of gratitude is not likely to be on speaking time with God. Are you here with me? Whoever forgets the language of gratitude is, <laughs> is going to be hard for that person to be on speaking time with God. Because when God healed the ten lepers, right? Remember, only, nine, only, only, only one came back. The nine other lepers, nine lepers went their way. They didn't come back. And Jesus Christ showed his disapproval. He showed his disappointment. He said, did I not eat ten? Where are the other nine? Why is it that only this Samaritan leper, why is it only him that came back to give glory to God? I don't know if you are just one of, the, you are part of that one Samaritan leper who came back to give God glory today. Who is not arrogating to himself or herself what he or she has. Who, who understands and appreciates the fact that whatever you have comes from God. That leper understood that, that uh, my healing is, by, is divine. Is, is, from the, is, is by the Lord's mercy. Because ordinarily, I told you, it was, it, was, it was divine that Christ even passed through that place. Christ was going to Jerusalem. He went to Jericho. And that was where he met those ten lepers at the outskirts of the city. Because lepers were not supposed to live among the people. They were ostracized. And even when Christ saw them, he could have ignored them. But Christ divinely intervened in their lives. He healed the ten. And only one person came back. How many times, you know, because of sense of entitlement, we Christians, we think that whatever we have, oh yeah, I work for it. I am hardworking. I have connection. I know this. I know that. No, 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 no. The race is not for the swift. Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. It's not because of who you are. It's not because you need somebody or that. It's by divine providence. Hallelujah. And I told you what providence is, what pro, pro video, that is God sees ahead. God knows the end from the beginning. So, people of God, Let's keep on giving thanks to God. Because God's highest gift in our life deserves and should awaken our deepest gratitude. So if you are here this morning and you are wondering, how can I show God my appreciation? You know, you are in the same boat with that psalmist who said in Psalm 116 verse 12 that ah, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? You are in the same boat. Sometimes you don't know what to do to show God's ap your appreciation. But this morning, I'm just going to tell you one or two things that you can do right now to give, to show God your, you know, your gratitude and your appreciation. That psalmist himself you know, replied in verse 17 of that Psalm 116. He said that we offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call upon the name of the Lord. You offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving. You just say, Daddy, I thank you. Thank you for my life. You know, if you don't have anything to thank God for, thank God for Jesus Christ. Bible says, thanks be unto God for his indescribable gift. What Christ has done in our life. Thank God. He took our place so that we might live. He died on our behalf. Amen. So this morning, if you are wondering, what can I do to show God my appreciation? 
You know, one of the things you can do is just obey God. You might say, in what way? Because God told us, he instructed us, he said, you, we are his witnesses. The world is perishing. People of God, people are dying left, right, and center. And we, f- we, 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 are, we appear as being unconcerned. We are not perturbed in our spirit to, let to, to be agitated, you know, to, to know that the, the devil is killing a lot of people, taking them to hell. Paul said, I am a debtor. Paul said, I am indebted both to the Greek and to the Jew. He said, woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. That's somebody who has understood the reality, you know, the essence of what the gospel is and, and the reality of what the devil is doing to humanity. You know, in our neighborhood, in our place of work, you know, at the long drama, wherever we go, we see a lot of people who have not come to the salvation knowledge, the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And God said in Isaiah 43, verse 10, Isaiah 43, verse 12, God said, you are my witnesses. God wants us to witness for him. I've told you, angels can't do this. God himself can't come down in from heaven and do it. God has sent you and I to go and witness on his behalf. Tell others what God has done for you. Hallelujah. He said, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Have you received that power? Then be his witness. He said, you shall be my witness, starting from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and to the Ottawa most end of the earth. Acts 1.8. That's what God said. It's a command. It's not a suggestion. God commanded us to go and be his witnesses. And I know every day we come in contact with a lot of people. All you need to tell them, you don't have to know the Bible from A to Z. From Genesis to Revelation, all you need to do, tell them what God has done in your life. That is why every opportunity that I have, I share my testimony with you guys. I share my testimony. You know? This morning, I share my testimony with some people. The kind of lifestyle we had and how God delivered us. Colossians 1, 13, the Bible says he delivered us from the power of darkness and translated to the kingdom of the son of love in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sin. I can stand before you today and, uh, and, say, and I can tell you if you have never seen a saint before, you are looking at one. I don't know if you have seen a saint. If you have never, you are looking at one. How did that happen? Bible says he made you who was the sin to be sin for me. In order for me to become his righteousness through Christ Jesus. If you have never seen a righteous person before, you are looking at one right now. Because Christ did it on my behalf. And he did the same thing on your behalf. And God wants us to go ahead and tell others what he did on our behalf. How he delivered us. How he snatched us from the, from, from the hand of the devil. How the devil has no control over us anymore. How we no longer live according to the dictate of this world. How we have control over our life. How I can tell the devil, the devil keep quiet. And he has to keep quiet. Are you a people of God? Let's be God's witnesses. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 102, no, Psalm 107, verse 1. It said, it, it, said, um, uh, it said, Give thanks unto the Lord for his goodness and his mercy endures forever. It said, Let the redeemed, verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord have you be the redeemed. God wants you to tell others. He said, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If God has redeemed you, the Bible says, Who he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy? Has God redeemed you from the hand of the devil? God wants you to tell somebody about it. That God has redeemed me. That you are no longer under the sway of the devil. You are now under a new management. God wants you to tell somebody about it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It's not, it's not good enough. It is selfishness for somebody to have the good news and keep it to himself. The good news is supposed to be spread. You need to disseminate it. Tell others. You know, don't let the devil use fear again, you know, fear to, 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 to box you in. You know, fear has torment. All you need to do, apply faith, use faith and apply wisdom on the job. Some of them are looking for somebody to say, God bless you to them. They've never had it for so long. God will help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's share our faith. 
share your faith with others. Sharing the good news, you know, the, the goodness of your salvation should be a natural expression for you know, a natural expression for our gratitude to God. If you realize what God did in your life, one of my uh, beloved sister, way back, I've not seen her for about 25 years now, suddenly called me during, you know, last week. So I had to call her this week. And uh, she was sharing her experience, what she knew about me with me. How that lady knew that my name, what they used to call me way back then, how she knew it, I couldn't even fathom. I had to ask my wife, how did she know that? I was wondering maybe we attended the same college because anybody who attended my, attended my college would know me by that name. But she didn't attend my college. She was telling me herself that God was already preparing me. And I shared a testimony. This was somebody when I was not even a pastor. I wasn't a pastor. She had a British pregnancy. A British pregnancy. She came to the hospital. And the, the nurses are taking care of her. But because she was close to me, she just, you know, you know, came to my office and said, why are you looking so morose? What's the problem? Oh, they told me my baby is, is British. I said, baby is British? This was me at that time. I was a born again Christian, but I wasn't a pastor. And I told her, do you want British delivery? That's what I do. I help you deliver the baby. He said, no, I don't want. I said, go tell God. She took a day off. And she said, she, she started telling God, I can say, if I don't want British pregnancy, I should tell you. I don't want British pregnancy. I don't want British pregnancy. And she said right there, there was a kind of turning in her tummy. That baby turned around and became Catholic. That girl, I'm telling you, is not a doctor. That girl that, you know, she, was, she had 25 years ago, is a doctor, a medical doctor. These are things that, you have similar experience that you can share with people. That you can share with people. So don't keep, your, don't keep quiet. Spread the good news. We are all indebted to, to, to humanity. Otherwise, they, God is going to ask of us of their blood if they should perish in their ignorance. But that shall not be our portion in Jesus' name. Don't let us keep on saying, I try bait and cash all the time. I am not cashing nothing. Something is fishy if you are not fishing for Christ. If you are not fishing for men, something is fishy with your, with your Christianity. A lot of us, we are here, we've never won a soul to the kingdom of God. You want to sneak into heaven as a lone ranger. You better don't let Peter tell you to go back. <laughs> Praise God. Number two, serve the Lord. Serve the Lord with your life. Serve the Lord with your totality. Serve the Lord with your being. Hallelujah. It's not just enough just coming to church. Even demons come to church. Don't you know that? The devil comes to church. What would differentiate you and demons and all those nefarious, you know, you know power that come to, to, to church is service. Don't just sit down and want, want, we don't have pews anymore. We have chairs. I want the chair every time. Amen? Because, let, let me tell you this. In the world, you know, in the world, people, you know, can't success by how many servants that you have, how many cars you have, how many houses you have. But God has shown us a more exemplary way and a, a more excellent way in the kingdom of God which you and I belong to. He said, you must, who want to be the greatest among you must be what? Must be the servant. It's by service, people of God. That is when you, that's how you know. <laughs> when you are writing the who and who, you know the people in the world, they have who and who. When you are writing the who and who, it's true service. What have you done for the kingdom? This is about our father's business. We are in his vineyard. What are you doing in the vineyard of God? Are you allowing we to grow around the vineyard of your father? Amen. You see, Jesus stated that the highest and the ultimate goal is to be a servant. And I want to add something quickly. That in this kingdom, your eternal reward, your eternal reward depends 
on what you do here on earth for the kingdom. Your eternal reward, what you are going to gain there, what to, you know, you know, your benefits in heaven. If you want God's best, give God your best service. Amen. Because our service in heaven depends on how well we serve the Lord here on earth. If you want to live in the ten room, you know, with ten toilets made with marble in heaven, then you have to do a commensurate service. But if you want to live in a studio apartment in heaven, of course, it's up to you. Don't do nothing. You live in your studio apartment. The same place where you are eating is where you're going to be pooping. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> it depends on your service. Hallelujah. All I know is that the person who did get a sick, you know, you know, serve the Lord on earth, will be given a commensurate and a, 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 a commensurate amount of responsibility in heaven. Amen. A commensurate. It depends on your service. You know, the measure of our reward when we get to heaven is directly related to how much service we have done to the Lord, for the Lord. That's why when God was talking in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, he said, and God has appointed some to be what? Apostles. First apostles, some prophets, some teachers, then after that miracles, then gift of healing, then helps. Say helps. Helps. You see that? Helps. Administrations and variety of tongues. There is a ministry of help in the body of Christ that you and I can actually partake in. So it's not just enough for us to just come and sit down. Oh, I'm a quiet lady. I am reserved. I'm this. Not in the, body, in the kingdom of God. We are interdependent on each other. We are interconnected. Helps describe the services in the body of Christ you know, to help and support the work of the Lord. You know, it could be somebody who's working in the nursery dance here. It could be somebody announced. Whatever you can do for God. That's why I give God the glory for my sister right there. Hallelujah. There's so much work to be done in the body of Christ. You know, in closing, let me just quickly show you this. In the book of Matthew 25, beginning from verse 14. Amen. Matthew 25, verse 15. Well, verse 14. He said, For the kingdom of God is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. He called them his own servant and he delivered the goods to them. And the man went his way. Amen. So what happened was that uh, he gave some five talents, he gave some two, he gave some against one one bible says to each according to his own ability according to his own ability god has called you he knows your ability but bottom line let me just tell you as far as god is concerned availability is better than ability are you available for god's use when you are available for god's use god is going to use you Whoever God calls, he appoints. Whoever God appoints, God anoints. When you make yourself available for God, God, here I am, send me. God is going to use you. He's going to fill you up. This was the same God who said in Exodus 31, he said, I have called a man called Bez He said, I have filled him with the spirit of the Lord. I have filled him with wisdom. And I have filled him with understanding to work all manners of, of workmanship. When you open up to God, say, God, use me. God's going to use you. So don't give yourself any excuses. Um, make yourself useless in the things of your father. Bible says, according to his own ability. But anyway, the man went away. And in verse 19, Bible says the man now came back. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. Let me tell you one thing. And that's the scary part. There is a day that accounts will be settled with us. There is a day that each of one, if every one of us, we will set to account with God. What are we doing here? How are we living our life? How, what are we doing to support the work of the Lord? You might be telling me, I told you, if you don't know how to thank God, you have to serve. Serve God. 
he came to settle, uh, settle accounts with them. And uh, you see, so he who had received five talents brought five talents back. He said, Lord, you did you, five of that talents. He said, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I've gained five more talents besides them. So this man who was giving five had ten. He multiplied his talents. So his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. I told you, you know, your, the, the, the measure of your reward when you get to heaven is commensurate, is proportional to your service on earth. This man multiplies his talents. So God said, okay, come on, come, 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 come. I'll make you ruler over many things. The separate, second person who had two came back, multiplied his own. But look at one. In verse 24, then he who had received the one, one talent came and said, <laughs> Lord, <laughs> I know you. Very hard man. You like to reap where you do when you didn't sow. Say, I, I, I'm very smart. You know what I did? I went and, and buried the talent because I don't want you to sow where you didn't, where you didn't sow. He said, I was afraid. I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, here, look, there you have what is yours. He said, you gave me one? Take your one talent back. Physically talking, he, the man was giving one, so the man returned your talent, so you have not lost anything, but look at what God said about this wicked, about this talent. In verse 20, he said, you wicked and lazy servant. Wicked and lazy. If you know that I reap where I didn't sow, uh -uh. why did you not invest my talent? Did you know what God called this man? God said it's unprofitable. In verse 30, he said, cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness that will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you are in the body of Christ, you are in the church, you don't want to lift a finger to support the work of God, you are not profitable. When Jesus Christ was given a, par a, a parable in the book of Luke 13, he said the man planted a tree and for three years he came back looking for fruit upon that tree. And he found none. He said, let us cut it down. But the gardener said, the master was God and the gardener was Jesus. He said, no, let's leave it for one year. I'm going to fertilize it. If I haven't fertilized it, it doesn't still bear fruit, cut it down. I pray that God will not cut any of us down in Jesus' name. Do something for your God. You know, if we just oppose that, um, that parable with the parable in the book of this, this same Luke, verse 19, when Jesus Christ said, Occupy till I come. Amen. God said we should do business till he comes. Luke 19, in, in, in verse 12, he said, Therefore, he said, A certain nobleman went to a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and return. That was Jesus. He went to receive a kingdom for himself and returned. So he called ten of his servants, delivered to them ten miners, and said to them, do business till I come. In other words, occupy till I come. This was an equal opportunity franchise, so to speak. He gave ten you know, servants, each of them, ten miners. Equal opportunity, what he gave them, just as God has given you and I equal opportunity. Because the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 3, he said, God has dealt with us a measure of faith. Everybody, as far as God is concerned, is useful. God wants to use us. But are you available? Is the question. So, you know what these people did? The Bible says, the first one. You know, when he returned, verse 15, having received the kingdom, he then commanded the servant to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know how much each man had gained by trading. He wanted to know. Then the first one came, Master, your manner has sent ten manners. So, and he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you are faithful in very little, have authority over ten cities. <laughs> the kind of building you are going to live in heaven. Depends on your service. Look at this man. Gain 10 more. The master said, okay, you can now be in charge of 10 cities. Hallelujah. Now, the other one came. He said, your man has earned five manners. Likewise, I said, oh, you also take over five cities. Did you see that? I didn't give him 10. He gave him five to, come, you know, to be proportional to how much service he did. You can't be seeing all these men of God running up and down and down. You think you are going to live in the same mansion if you don't do the same thing. 
You see some people winning so, winning so. You saw a old medical doctor who gave up his work and his, start, his, his distributing Bible. We brought him here. You saw him yourself. This is Bibles on the street corners. And we think we are too big to serve God. This man is an MD. Gave up his profession. Just for you to talk to somebody in your neighborhood. Just for you to talk to that person you talk to on your phone. It's too hard for you. It's too much work for you to do for God. You see, the man said, okay, you, you gave him five more. Okay, take five more. Then another one came. Master, here is a minor, which I have kept away and put away in another kerchief. I don't have time for, I don't have time for people who want to live where they don't so. I took your minor, I put them in another kerchief so that when you come, you can have your, your, your minor. Because I know you are an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. Uh -uh. The ma he said, and he said to him, out of your own mouth, I will judge you. You wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man, collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank? You see, people of God, I want you to know your service will be rewarded. Do something for God. Don't just come to church and sit down and sit down and sit down. Do something. Be useful. Open up to God. Everybody can be used by God. I want you to know that God has given each and every one of us enough talents to be able to serve in this body. But are you ready to serve? Don't be like some Christians that the only work out they do is jump into conclusions. <laughs> Hallelujah. I say some Christians, the only work out they do is to run, other, run down other Christians. Some Christians, the only work out they do is to step, step, step their responsibility. And some of them, the only work out they do is to push their luck. Which part, which one are you? My advice to all one of you today, if you don't know what to do to thank God, is that, you know, work for the Lord. The pay may not be much, but the retirement plan is out of this world. Are you with me? If God doesn't pay weekly, but I want you to know God pays at the end. At the end. Amen? And I want to ask you a question right now. What on earth are you doing for heaven's sake? <laughs> Hallelujah. Think about that. So if you are here under the sound of my voice, you don't know what to do for God. You don't, want to, you don't know how to appreciate God for all this benefit upon your life. Be his witness. Serve the Lord. God bless you, the good in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good.